So this morning I'm on the line with Mike Peters of the Great American Cookout Tour. And with Memorial Day right around the corner, he's going to give us some tips on grilling. Uh, Mike is one of the hosts of Great American Cookout Tour, and he and his wife, Christine, travel the country, uh, kind of giving people the gospel of the queue. Me being a novice, my husband thinking that he is a pro, uh, Mike is the perfect person to give us more information and to share with the readers of eatthebirds.com. So, good morning, Mike. Good morning. So, I understand that you have a technique called the reverse sear. Yes. This is something that I'm very interested in. It's supposed to help to banish dried chicken, and I'm all about that. So can you give us some information about the reverse sear? I'd love to. In, in all of our travels across the country, that's the one big question that we have of, of people is, how do I not dry out my chicken? And uh, this reverse sear method is great because it's two parts. One, it's a great marinade. Uh, and great marinades are, are fantastic to add that wonderful juicy flavor. And the second is don't overcook your chicken. Uh, in our barbecue world, we like to do it low and slow. And unfortunately, a lot of people want it hot and fast and they want it now. But uh, a little bit of both and, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. Our marinade that, that we prefer is the Grillmates Brown Sugar Bourbon Marinade. Uh, it's quick and easy. Uh, it's a five minute process to, to marinate your chicken. And that's the other thing people say, five minutes, I thought I needed to marinate it overnight. Um, we're going to show you a nice, quick and easy five-minute marinade, and uh, everybody can do this at home. That's awesome. Well, first, uh, I'm using some uh, skinless, boneless chicken breast. Uh, that in a nice resealable Ziploc bag, and you're good to go. We've already mixed up the marinade, a little bit of oil, a little bit of vinegar. The recipe's right on the back, just a touch of water. Whisk it up a little bit more just to make sure that it's all together. We're going to add that to our chicken. Seal it up. Make sure that you get it sealed up good. Get all that air out of there. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to massage it. Nice, easy, for about five minutes worth of time. Just massage that chicken. Gets all that flavor, all that wonderful, juicy, goodness of that brown sugar bourbon marinade into all the pores of the chicken. Now on my grill, I've got it set up for uh, an indirect method. And we like talking indirect when we do barbecue wise because you never want to have the, the fire touch the, kiss the, the meat so to speak. Um, so we're going to do an indirect method. I've got two different zones on my gas grill. One I've got it turned off. That's where I've got my chicken cooking right now. The other side is running about 275 degrees. We're gonna cook it, leave it in there for about 20 to 25 minutes. So it it's, gives you plenty of time to, to have fun with your guests that are over for the, the, the weekend, uh, for the barbecue wise. You can still have some time. It's gonna cook, it's gonna bring the chicken up to temperature wise. At the very end, what we're gonna do we're going to save a little bit of our marinade. We're going to baste it on the chicken and then move it over to the, the direct heat or the direct grill. At that point, you turn it up to about 350 or turn it up to high. Get that nice and hot. It's going to give you some beautiful grill marks on your chicken breast. So when you pull it off, it should look just like this. Nice, beautiful grill marks. You've got the wonderful caramelization from that basting on the back end wise. Doesn't take very long at all. And if you do it right, you should get a nice, wonderful, juicy piece of chicken. So all the flavor, That's all that delicious. Juices, that back end by putting it onto the direct heat, that basting it one more time, putting it on at the back end, it's going to give you some nice caramelization on there, and it's going to keep the chicken nice and moist on the inside. And that's what we're looking for is that juicy, flavorful chicken. So with chicken, is it all about timing, or how can you tell when it's done? I think that's why a lot of the people that I know overcook it. That's one of the things I don't like about um, 
barbecues on on the holiday is that the chicken's always overcooked and I think people are afraid that they're undercooking it. So can you touch it or is there something you can see that you'll know that the chicken's done and ready to go? You know, it's kinda like the, the, the steak thing where you where you touch your hand your palm wise to tell when it's done. I prefer a chicken uh, a, an actual meat thermometer. You always want to cook it to at least 165 degrees. When you poke it as far as if you poke it wise and the juices come clear that usually means it's done because we're doing it on an indirect heat wise that indirect heat is going to cook that chicken from the inside it's going to give it a more flavorful it's going to keep more of those juices inside wise um, when we smoke chicken oftentimes um, if I'm doing it less than 250 indirect with uh, smoking chips or smoking wood it might still come out a little bit pink on the edges that's more like a smoke ring and it's still going to be cooked on the inside. So as long as the juices come clear, okay. normally you're fine. Okay, awesome. I have a few other questions. Sure. So you and your wife travel the country. Tell me, what are some of your favorite barbecue festivals? Oh, boy. Uh, Washington, D.C., the barbecue battle uh, held on Pennsylvania Avenue is fantastic. Um, We've been to New York City at the Big Apple Barbecue Block Party. Uh, we go out to Reno, Nevada. Sparks, Nevada actually is the nugget rib cook-off. About a half a million people over Labor Day weekend, and those are probably some of our favorite ones. Oh, that sounds cool. I think the nugget rib cook-off is one that my husband wants to attend. Yeah. Um, he's been trying to get me to go to Nevada. I'm not a fan of the, of the desert, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> It's For nice some good food, I think I'd, I'd be willing to do it. And there's so much food there, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. And we'll be set up there. This will be our eighth year out there in, uh, in Reno. We'll be doing our reverse here chicken method, uh, doing free samples and everything for folks that want to come out and see. Awesome. So I understand you got your start in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, what is Kansas City Barbecue known for? Uh, Kansas City Barbecue is more of a tomato-based sweet sauce. Um, we, we travel the country and when we do competitions, we know one way to do it and that is that, that same way. So um, we were just in Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago and competed at a contest. We did okay, but California loves our stuff. So uh, I'm, I don't know what that says about the, uh, the barbecue out there, but they love our tomato-based sweet sauce that, uh, that we do our Kansas City style. Okay, awesome. And then my last question is this. This is something that my husband and I debate on. Uh, he has his preference and I have mine. What about you as far as smoking? What is your wood of choice? Or is there a combination? There's a combination and each different protein uh, to me requires different woods. Uh, oak and hickory are the base. Um, oak gives me the heat, hickory gives me a little bit of flavor wise. Whenever we do our pork products, we're always using apple wood. Uh, apple wood is great. It gives a nice, uh, a nice uh, fruity flavor, I guess, uh, but it's very mild. When we do our uh, chicken, my wife is my, she's known as the chicken queen out there because of competition. She always does well. Uh, and uh, I, she doesn't know it, but I always sneak some cherry wood in there at the end when she sets her sauce and puts it back on the, uh, the smoker. A little cherry wood just uh, gives that nice flavor in the sauce. Oh, I might have to try that combo. I'm a fan of the hickory and pecan. My husband is more of a mesquite person, so we always have our, our preferences. And usually, I just go ahead and let him win because uh, I don't want to stand at the grill all day, so he can take over. Uh, lastly, can you just let us know how can we find out more information about the Great American Cookout Tour and you and your wife? I the Great American Cookout Tour, you can find us on Facebook, and all of these recipes and, and, and more of the recipe ideas, make sure you tell folks to go to grillmates.com. Uh, they're going to be updating uh, tips, trends, recipe ideas all summer long. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. This has been great. I've learned a lot. Thank you.